Hi, I'm professional sports handicapper Ross Benjamin. It's Sunday, April 5th, time for another edition of my Major League Baseball Divisional Futures updates. We already covered the National League East and the National League West, and today we're going to take a look at the National League Central Division. This is a division that saw two teams make the postseason uh, last year. Obviously, their division champ would qualify, and that was the St. Louis Cardinals, who advanced to the NLCS before losing to the eventual world champion Washington Nationals in seven games, and then also the Milwaukee Brewers, who qualified as a wild card team. Milwaukee was eliminated as well in the National League uh, wild card game by the Washington Nationals. Um, you're looking at the odds to win this division, and obviously the odds makers in Las Vegas and in the offshore community are seeing this to be a very competitive division, and I agree with them, as four of the five teams have futures odds of plus 225 to plus 350 to win a division. That's highly unusual, and it does happen on occasion, but this is one of those rare instances, and uh, I look for this to be uh, a race that goes down to the final month of the year and could be as, much, as many as three teams in contention to win the division by that time. Let's start with the St. Louis Cardinals. They're a co-favorite in the division along with the Chicago Cubs at odds of plus 225. This is a Cardinals franchise that's been a model of consistency by going 12 consecutive seasons with a winning record during that 12-year period of time. The Cardinals have qualified for the playoffs on seven separate occasions, also won the division five times. They're going to be led by veteran first baseman Paul Goldschmidt, the 31-year-old who came over during this uh, the 2019 offseason. Um, he came over from the Arizona Diamondbacks. He started out very slow in his first season with the Cardinals last year, but at the final result, um, you know, you look at his numbers uh, at the end of the regular season. He ended up with 34 home runs and 97 RBIs. There will be a lot of guys in, the ma in Major League Baseball that certainly would sign up for those kind of numbers. Starting pitching for St. Louis, especially their top three, I think is going to be very strong. Two youngsters in Jack Flaherty and Dakota Hudson will both be 25 this season. And then you have the 16-year veteran in Adam Wainwright. Speaking of Wainwright, all of his previous 15 years were spent as a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. Last year, he grinded out a gutsy 14-10 and 10 year and 31 starts. He was even better in the postseason in two starts and one relief appearance during uh, the 2019 postseason. He uh, posted a 162 ERA in 16 and two-thirds innings of work. Not bad for the veteran pitcher. And then you're looking at um, both Hudson and Flaherty as 24-year-olds last season. Flaherty was 11 and 8 in 33 starts. However, that doesn't tell the whole story as he posted an excellent 275 ERA and 097 whip during those 33 starts. Very easily could have been a 15 or 16 game winner if not for the fact that he suffered from a lack of run support and a couple of blown saves. Dakota Hudson, uh, how about 16 and 7 in 32 starts last season? Boy, the Cardinals were pleasantly surprised with those results. And I think that if you asked to a man the Cardinals coaching staff and front office, they would hope that Dakota Hudson can even match or come near those numbers this season, and they'd be awfully happy. Next in line, the Chicago Cubs, the other cold favorite in the NL Central at odds of plus 225. Uh, last year, disappointing season, 84 and 78. High expectations, as always, with the Cubs, especially since they won the World Series in 2016. They've been a regular player in the postseason during that course of time. And uh, Joe Madden, after five years as manager of the Cubs, his first resulting in a world title, uh, was let go at the end of last season. And boy, oh boy, you have to look at his five-year tenure with the Cubs 471 and 339, folks, that's a 581 win percentage. Boy, oh boy, tough crowd to please at Wrigley Field in Chicago. He'll be relieved by David Ross, who was named the 61st manager in Cubs franchise history. Ross is yet to, to manage a game on any level 
of professional baseball. He's a former Cub. He's a well-liked player. He also was in the broadcast booth last year. Very likable uh, young man in David Ross, and I'm sure he'll do a fine job. But the jury will be out, and the pressure will be on, especially after they let Joe Madden go with that terrific record they had over the last five years. The Cubs will also hope that their big slugger, Chris Bryant, who came out of the gate in his first two Major League Baseball seasons and uh, hit a combined 65 home runs and drove in 201 runs, can sort of get back in form. I mean, over the last three years, uh, Bryant hasn't come close to those types of numbers, and the Cubs are hoping uh, maybe a managerial change could spark uh, a upgrade in his offensive production and come close to the numbers, if not exceed them, he did in his first two Major League Baseball seasons. You know, you look at this Cubs projected batting order, and if all goes as planned, six of the first seven hitters in the lineup will have hit 21 home runs or more in 2019. So this is a lineup that's very powerful, shouldn't have any trouble scoring runs, and uh, it's all going to come down to what kind of pitching they get. Uh, I really like Kyle Hendricks. He's their number three starter as we speak. And uh, Hendricks has probably been one of the most underrated pitchers in all of baseball over the last few seasons. As a matter of fact, in his career, 63 and 43 and 162 starts with a stellar 314 ERA. That's pretty darn good, folks. And he'll be the other pitchers in the rotation veterans, John Lester, Hugh Darvish, um, along with Hendricks, and then Jose Quintana, and also uh, Tyler Chatwood, the former Colorado Rockies right-hander. So uh, the, the starter rotation doesn't look that bad, although uh, Lester and Darvish have shown they're in a little bit of a decline and may be at the tail end of their careers. We'll see if they can bounce back. Chatwood, not very impressive numbers at Col in Colorado, but by the same token, who does? pitch well at Coors Field, being their home field uh, in regards to a starting pitcher. And Jose Quintana, off not a bad year, and this guy still uh, is one of those pitchers you never know. He might surprise and win 15 to 18 games this year. Their closer will be the highly controversial Craig Kimbrell, who held out for the majority of last season, and the Cubs finally uh, signed him in midseason, and boy, oh boy, you could tell that Kimbrough was rusty as uh, he had a 6.53 ERA and 23 relief appearances. And, uh, you know, you look at the eight years prior to last year, Kimbrough recorded 31 or more saves in each of those seasons. I look for him to return to form this year. I just think, um, you know, between sitting out so long, uh, being rusty out of the get-go, uh, it just never seemed to uh, blend in for Kimbrel last year, and he struggled throughout the course of his appearances in 2019. Next, the Cincinnati Reds, at odds of two, plus 275, not far off of the Cubs in St. Louis. And I know a lot of you out there were, are saying, this is a team that won 75 and 87 last year, and they're just about the same size uh, favorite to win the division as the mighty Cubs and, and the defending champion Cardinals. Well, you know, you look inside the numbers in the roster here, and you can see why. They made two very good trades at the deadline last season in acquiring uh, former Toronto shortstop Freddie Galvis. Uh, Galvis between Toronto and Cincinnati last year, 23 home runs and 70 RBIs. Not bad for a shortstop. And then also they picked up right fielder Nick Castellano, the longtime um, Detroit Tiger. Over the last three years, Castellanos has averaged 25.3 home runs and 87.7 RBIs per season. They also, a nice free agent acquisition uh, during the offseason and picking up former Kansas City Royal and Milwaukee Brewer Mike Moustakis. And Moustakis last year with the Milwaukee Brewers, 35 home runs, 87 RBIs. And uh, that was arguably the best season of Moustakas' career. He's also very good at third base defensively. Joey Votto, the 14-year veteran, returns to Cincinnati for his 14th year, as I alluded to. And uh, Votto is a career 307 hitter uh, while 
topping 100 RBIs or more on three separate occasions during the course of his career. Excuse me for the switch of hands with my papers, trying to get all these notes in order here. And then the big star for Cincinnati, probably unheralded, is uh, Eugenio Suarez. Uh, the last two years for the Cincinnati Reds, Suarez has combined to hit 83 home runs and drive in 207 RBIs, or 207 runs, I should say. So take an eye uh, on the Cincinnati Reds team. Uh, they have what's the making of a very good offensive lineup. They also have a couple very good starters at the top of the rotation, and Luis Castillo, who was 15-8 and eight in 32 starts last year with a 3.40 ERA, power pitching right-hander. Uh, also, Sonny Gray in his first season uh, with the Cincinnati Reds after coming over from an uh, elongated period of time with the New York Yankees. Uh, another pitcher similar to um, what we alluded to uh, with St. Louis's uh, Jack Flaherty, 11-8 and eight last year with a 2.87 ERA and 31 starts again pitch much better than his record would indicate and the rest of the rotation Trevor Bauer uh, the former Cleveland Indian Wade Miley the uh, veteran left-hander and uh, Anthony DiScofani uh, who's been with the Reds since the beginning of his career shapes up to be a pretty good starting rotation a pretty powerful uh, lineup uh, it potentially a pretty powerful lineup if everybody stays healthy uh, their clothes are not bad at all Rossell Iglesias, uh, since 2016, he's gone 98 for 112 on his save opportunities. That's an 87.5% conversion rate over that uh, five-year period of time. That's awfully darn good, folks. Uh, Four-year period of time, I should say. Next, we're going to take a look at the Milwaukee Brewers as I switch my notes all around again. Uh, Milwaukee 89-73 and 73 last year, as I touched upon already. They were the National League wild card team. Uh, they, they lost to at Washington in that wild card game, blowing a, a late lead in that contest. Uh, they're going to be led by their star, Christian Yelich. This guy's just been absolutely terrific since coming to Milwaukee from the Miami Marlins organization. Over his last two years, Yelich has hit 80 home runs, knocked in 207 runs, and has gone 52 out of 58 in the stolen base department. On top of that, a very good arm, a real good uh, outfielder. This is a five-tool player in every sense of the word. And also, the Brewers are going to hope that Lorenzo Cain can bounce back from a so-so season in 2018, return to the form he showed in 2018 when he hit 308 with a 395 on-base percentage and stole 30 uh, bases uh, out of the leadoff spot. They're hoping... Kane could be the table setter this year. Uh, keep an eye on 23-year-old second baseman Keston Hiora. Uh, he was called up mid-season last year, played in 85 game, or 84 games for Milwaukee. Uh, during that short period of time, he was able to amass 19 home runs, 49 RBIs, and put together a tremendous 938 slugging percentage, or excuse me, OPS. So look for him. Uh, to uh, let's see if that was a fluke. I don't think it was. I think you were looking at a guy that could hit 35 home runs and come close to 100 RBIs this year if all goes as planned. Uh, they had a nice free agent acquisition during the offseason with veteran first baseman Justin Smoke over the last three years with the Toronto Blue Jays. Smoke's averaged a little over 27 home runs per season and close to 78 RBIs per year. I don't like their starting rotation at all although they do have one of the premier closers in baseball and 25-year-old left-hander Josh Hader. Last season, Hader was absolutely magnificent, 37 out of 44 with the save opportunities, with a 262 ERA, and this is a guy who struck out 138 men in just 72 and two-thirds innings pitched, so Milwaukee is in very good hands in their closer role. Uh, the last team on the chart, the Pittsburgh Pirates, at odds of plus 10,000. Folks, save your money. The Pirates, the big question with the Pirates right now, they went 69-93 and 93 last year. Are they going to lose 100 games this year? I think if they don't, they'll be awfully close to doing so. Um, they have one star that I really like, their first baseman, 
27-year-old Josh Bell, uh, his career best uh, last year, 37 home runs and 116 RBIs. Above and beyond that, don't like their pitching. The rest of their batting order uh, doesn't really uh, shout out to me and say, hey, we might do something. I don't like Pittsburgh at all. I think they'll be a shoe-in for last place in the division. Now, to recap everything, as far as making my pick to win the division, I'm going to eliminate Pittsburgh, obviously, as I just touched upon. The Milwaukee Brewers, I think, are one of those teams that are going to be exciting to watch. They'll score a lot of runs, but I'm not so sure their starting pitching rotation and their middle relief will hold up. They'll certainly be in good hands with Josh Hader if they enter the late innings with a lead. However, I just don't think it's sustainable to win a division. I don't think they'll be a playoff team as well. The St. Louis Cardinals, now the question mark with St. Louis with me, and it's a big one, is are they going to be able to score enough runs? They struggled at times offensively last year. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, I, I mentioned his numbers, but he can't do it all by himself. He's going to need somebody to protect him in the lineup, and I'm not sure they have who they need to do so. And I think ultimately their pitching will be very good and they'll win their fair share of games as a result. I think they'll be in a playoff hunt right down to the wire, but I just think that their lack of offense will ultimately cost them. And then the Chicago Cubs, you know, this is the most talented team on paper, but as the old saying goes, uh, you don't win on paper, you win on the field. Now that's not to say the Cubs won't win this division, but you know, my, my thing is here is I don't like taking first-year managers um, as a favorite to win a division, especially a first-year manager in uh, Ross, David Ross that um, hasn't managed at any professional level in his career. So the jury will be out on him. Uh, they may surprise me and win this division going away. I don't know if it would surprise me. It certainly wouldn't shock me, but I'm not going to uh, put my money on that. I am going to take a flyer. This may be my only flyer I take uh, in my Major League Baseball divisional picks. On the Cincinnati Reds at odds of plus 275, I just think the books uh, are, are too astute to make them this big of a favorite. When, when I say this big of a favorite, look, they're not a chalk. They're not the Dodgers at minus 900. They're certainly not the Yankees at minus 300. But at plus 275 and the co-favorites are plus 250, that tells me something, especially when you look at the Reds. Uh, they were 12 games under 500 last year, and uh, the books, you know, they're, they're not that stupid. They wouldn't make the odds this high, and I'm sure that they won't get a lot of action. I would not be shocked at all uh, if Cincinnati doesn't eventually rise to somewhere around 300, 325 before the season begins. I like the Cincinnati Reds here as a long shot pick for me at plus 275 to win the NL Central. Until the next time, when we'll be covering the American League divisions, look, folks, be safe out there. Be smart. Be responsible. Look out for one another. And God bless each and every one of you.